Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Well, it was also a weekend with a lot of shows we got to talk about here. Noah Marigold, Fantastic Mania, SmackDown Collision. I guess we'll start with Noah. How much of the show did you see? I saw the last three matches of the Noah show, and they were all excellent. Um, it was um, Alpha Wolf and Dragon Bane against um, Galeno Del Mal and uh, El Hio de Dr. Wagner Jr. Have you seen Galeno Del Mal at all? I know he worked for Defy once. I did not see him. Okay, the guy is... I don't. I, I couldn't say how tall he is. I mean, I'm going to say six three. Uh, maybe um, they announced him at six five, three twenty, and he's he's three three or three hundred plus. I mean, the guy he reminds me of a of a young Terry Gordy. He's like twenty two, twenty three years old. He's the son of uh, Doctor Wagner Jr., so grandson of Doctor Wagner and the brother of El Hijo del Doctor Wagner, and uh, this guy. For a guy of that size, you know, he goes out there, does all the loose stuff. He's incredibly agile. It's like when I first saw the guy so agile, my first thought is, just like, my God, 22 years old with this agility and that size. Um, I mean, he could go somewhere, but his style is so lucha. And on the American scene, like you get a guy that size, the last thing like an American promoter is going to want is a guy that size running around doing lucha. So he'd have to almost like, they would want him to be a big bruiser type. So he'd almost have to revamp himself. But still, like, he's throwing high drop kicks and doing the flip dives and, you know, all the all the lucha stuff the small guys do and not bad at it at all. I mean, even, you know, it's not like it's some big guy trying to. But anyway, um, this was a really good match. Great match. Great match. And the next one was um, AJ and uh, Mar Fuji. And um, super match. Um, super match between AJ and Mar Fuji. I think as a, just as a pure wrestling match, I think it was better than the um, AJ Cody Rhodes matches. Um, I don't think, uh, it didn't have the heat of those matches. But Mar Fuji was, was, you know, like, Mar Fuji can go when he needs to go. Um, but you're not going to see that in most matches, but you could see that Mara Fuji was way up for this. And AJ maybe even more than Mara Fuji because AJ did, you know, I mean, AJ, AJ looked like, uh, the AJ of, of New Japan pro wrestling. He looked like one of the best wrestlers in the world, like spectacular in this match. Um, you know, and, uh, so yeah, AJ won, of course, and, uh, it's the start of the relationship. Um, the N1 tournament which is coming up, it's their version of G1, it's coming up in um, August, I believe, right? August, through the, through the month of August, I think? Um, or is it September? But um, they're going to have a, a Josh Briggs and um, Tavian Heights yes. are going to be in that tournament. So WWE is sending guys over there for a month, you know, NXT guys. And then the main event was um, Kaito Kiyomiya and, and Yoichi for the uh, GHC title. And uh, they, had a, they, had a, they had a fantastic match, too. Um, you know, um, Yoichi's like, it's like it's something that would work in Japan. He's a big guy, but he doesn't have, like, a pretty physique or anything like that. But he's a big powerhouse guy. But he's got he's got good charisma for Japan. And Kiyomi is really good, really freaking good wrestler. And, um, yeah. Um, and, then you know, good crowd as far as reactions go. Yeah. Um, I heard that Ken Owen, Yuji Nagata had a hell of a match on the undercard. Um, a lot of the matches I heard were really, really good on the undercard. I think um, so. Yeah, but it it uh, from what I gather, the Noah show and the Marigold show were both really good. I saw uh, several of the Marigold matches. The one, the one everyone's talking about is um, Io Sky and Utami Hayashida, and uh, you know, it was a super match. Did you see that match? I only saw the uh, Julia main event with Saray, which I thought was a pretty damn great match, too. Yeah, the Utami match was the better of the two. Um, the Utami, I, I, I mean, I know there are people who think the Utami match is like the greatest women's match in years and years and years. And I, I mean, it was a great match, but I, I, I can't say it was like the greatest women's match in years and years. But Io Sky was so freaking great in that match. I mean, it, you know, it's like, it's like she was a different person. And, um, Kind of, both AJ and her kind of made statements, kind of like wink, you know, like, you know, um, you know, kind of like you have to, 
you know, the bat, like, like AJ was trying to knock me. It made no sense what he was saying, but, but he tried. But his, his thing was, is, oh, this guy gives five star matches to this stuff in Japan and it doesn't matter and nobody cares. But, you know, when you watch the matches, it's like, there's a reason that they're better here. And it's like, Bleh. so anyway, um, his thing is, and it's because the fans. And so he's basically saying the fans create, you know, because of what they like, they make a match better. And EO was just like, um, she she gave the thing of like, I took everything I could come up with to beat Utami. So that was her thing of, she did so many things and her timing was good. Her charisma was fan. She comes across so much more charismatic there because she was a superstar there for years, left for, you know, six years, whatever it's been, however long she's been in WWE, comes back. So now she's coming back as a legend. So she's got that aura thing going for her. And, you know, she did so much more than she ever does in, in any match, even even like the Bailey match, you know, where, you know, that was on a big stage and everything like that. She did like, twice as much in this match as, as she would do in that match um and you know tommy is uh not as charismatic but um technically really freaking good so um i mean they had they had an awesome match the only negative that i would say is that in marigold okay julie is the top star in marigold but she's leaving you know um before the end of the year She's leaving. I don't know. There's no time frame today on when that date is. But, um, and I heard it's not right away, but it's, you know, in the long run, Marigold is going to have to survive without her. Okay. And she can't be the top star for very long and shouldn't be because she didn't long for the company. So the top star, Saray is like, um, she, I mean, she's a freelancer. She works for other companies. She's going to work. A lot of marigold dates but you you know you really want to build around one of your own people and with julia gone the obvious person's who tommy okay i felt watching this that the the role that eo should have played um i i would guess that from a political standpoint which is which is a situation with wwe i mean from a political from from a normal business helping your partner standpoint there was no question in my mind there's only one logical finish to this match which is utami goes over because eo's the guest star utami is the person who's being groomed to be the, your top star she needs a big win over somebody like eo to get her over the hump i mean there's no it's a no-brainer but i'm sure that the politics were that you know wwe will send us you know send you eo sky but you can't beat her so they did what they did okay and that's understandable that that eo won you know based on those politics I don't think that WWE is the partner that they're claiming, but at the same time, these groups, these groups that are working with WWE and groups that WWE is also talking with, there's other groups like that. The bottom line is, is they want to work with WWE so bad and they're going to accept whatever WWE says. They're not going to be like when it comes to old school working together and you go like, well, we need this and we need this. It's like, no, this is what you're going to get. And you're not going to be beating our top people. Well, even in the uh, the Julie match, it was Julie and Saray for the uh, the the title. It was going to be the first champion, and you know the finish of the match was Saray goes after the bad wrist, and she takes off the wrist brace and she takes off the tape and everything, and she's got the little thing on her arm, and uh, and she goes for the fingers and the wrist, and she starts cranking the fingers and the wrist. And the referee stops the match, and like immediately the announcers are like, she didn't give up, she didn't quit, the referee yeah. stopped it. I mean, they very much protected Julia even in losing. Like, she did yeah, not but, give but, up. But, but that's a, that's a, The that's referee a, stopped it. But that's a different thing because Julia hasn't started with WWE yet. Um, and also, they had to create a world champion. You know, so it's a different thing. But yes, when they created a world champion, they didn't have a... They, they, they didn't... They didn't get a submission or a pin. No, they, they didn't get the, a submission or a pin. They protected they the, her very, very much in that finish. Yeah, they got as much as they probably could, but in the other one, they got nothing. Um, but it wasn't that as much as I thought that, like, I thought that Io's role, Io's role reminded me, she's like this superstar coming in for a big show against the person who they are grooming to be the number one person in the territory. But for political reasons, she cannot lose. 
So in that case, her role should be to put the hell over Utami as much as she can while beating her. And I just felt that this was an EO Sky showcase. Um, and not that Utami looked bad, but when it was over, my thought was, fuck, EO Sky is fantastic. And Utami had a great match with her. But it's the, all of my thought was how great EO Sky was. And my thought should be, oh my God, EO Sky is great, but that Utami. She, she can carry the territory. I mean, she what a what a great match she did in losing, and I just felt that Io came off with more charisma, and Io was the the you know did all the cool moves. You know what I mean? It was like it was a super match, but I don't think it was the right match for Utami. And Utami's the one who's staying in the territory. Io's never coming back, or if she's coming back, you know maybe maybe in six months or a year. You know, so that that is my qualm is that for the for the territory, for the promotion, was it the right thing? Was it the right way to do the match? And, and the answer is no, it wasn't. But but it was a fantastic match. And then um, um, what was the other one? Is Mirai and Miku Aono for the um, to set up the the um, United National. So they they had a great match too. Um, the and Miku Aono won, and it set up Miku and um, Bozilla. And uh, for the United National title, for the first United National Championship. And uh, Miku won on a cradle. Bozilla pretty much played monster. Um, and then it was kind of a cradle out of nowhere. Um, the match was fine. You know, Bozilla, um, you know, she's very inexperienced still. She's, she's very good for her level of experience. And she's only going to get better working there for, you know, I think she's, she's going to be there for the rest of the year. Um, full time, and um, you know it'll be the best thing for her, and probably at some point, you know, in the not too distant future, because any woman wrestler who's really good, you know, is going to go to AEW or WWE probably too early, and she's, you know, I think that they know. Look, eventually, you know, they're hoping, you know, they're probably hoping to get a year or two out of her before she goes to WWE or AEW. Um, I hear really good things about her in the sense of her instincts and her attitude and all that's good. She's big. Um, she's athletic. She's got the, um, you know, you look at it and go, she's got a really good foundation for this, but she's still really green at this too. Um, so um, I wouldn't say that, that was a great match, but um, but it was watchable and everything. And I heard the undercard was good, um, but they had a good presentation. Like it was, this was like a really, from what I saw, the way the show flowed and the match quality and everything. Um, the Marigold show was, was really good. Really freaking good. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.